what are the key information requirements that you are going to need? So the first thing that you're going to need is you're going to need a P&L, often called an income statement. So that will tell you how profitable the business is, what the revenue was, uh, what the costs and expenses are, the overhead, and how much profit or cash flow is the business generating on an annual basis. Hey guys, Carl Allen, welcome to day five of 10 days to buying your first business. So yesterday in day four, we were talking about seller meetings. We were talking about it being really important to build rapport. We were talking about the five killer questions that you need to ask to kind of start to preliminary vet the business you're looking to buy. And then we also wrapped up by talking about the procedure of signing an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement. And then once you sign that NDA, it's gonna give you access to certain financial and other data regarding the business to allow you to complete that vetting value structure and then make an offer on that business, which is what we're gonna be doing uh, day six and seven. So what is an NDA? So an NDA stands for a non-disclosure agreement. Basically, I'm not a lawyer, even though I've read a million pages of law. It's not really worth the paper that it's written on. It's effectively a document that prevents you as somebody potentially looking to buy the business from disclosing any of the information that you're getting into the public domain. So it's to stop you getting the customer list. It's to stop you getting the employee information. It's to stop you getting financial data and then sharing that with competitors in the marketplace. Very, very complicated and expensive to prove in a court of law, but as noble capitalists, as good buyers, we sign those documents um, and it gives seller peace of mind. And it's all, again, part of the deal psychology. It's all part of the, the seller psychology and the rapport and the relationship that you're building with that business owner that's looking to sell you the business. So we sign an NDA, typically it's a one or two page document. If you're inside any of my programs, you have access to copies of those documents. Uh, and then once you've signed that, the seller is going to give you financial information. Now, if it's a broker deal, you've probably got that information anyway before you've even met the seller. You'll have got the financial data, and then you can probably use the seller meeting to talk to the seller about some of the financial trends that are going on inside of the business. Now, what are the key information requirements that you are going to need? So the first thing that you're going to need is you're going to need a P&L often called an income statement. So that will tell you how profitable the business is, what the revenue was, uh, what the costs and expenses are, the overhead, and how much profit or cash flow is the business generating on an annual basis. And you need that information for the last three years. Now, what I also ask for, so these are accounts which are produced either by the external accountant or the CPA that the business uses, all these could be internally generated accounts from a QuickBooks or a Sage if you're in the UK or a Xero, which is a, an online accounting platform that now a lot of people are using. So you definitely want that. What you don't want are financial statements that are either created by hand or they're created like an Excel spreadsheet. You want the information in an accounting platform so then you know it's got a lot more chance of being true and accurate. So you want three years of the profit and loss. What you also might want to get at this stage as well, if they're available, is the tax returns. Now, and we'll get into this tomorrow when we talk about valuation. Sometimes the tax return numbers are different than the accounts. So we need to go through like a recasting process. So we'll get that tomorrow. Because as you can imagine, if you've ever owned a business, um, let's just say, to be very efficient when it comes to taxation. Uh, potentially, there are things we put through our business as expenses that are not kind of really expenses, and those need to get added back. Again, we'll talk about that tomorrow in valuation and structure. So if you get the tax returns, you can see the difference between the two, and then those tend to be what we call add backs, and we'll get into that tomorrow as well. So that's the income statement. The other thing that we need is we need balance sheets. So we need balance sheets for the last three years as well. And what balance sheets give us are two things. Number one, it tells us what assets and liabilities are inside of the business and potentially as part of the deal structure. 
you got it. We're talking about that tomorrow. We might be looking to inherit some of those liabilities, some of those debts, a bit like a sub two property deal so that we can lower the closing payment and lower the valuation. And what we also will find from a balance sheet is how much working capital the business needs to trade. So think of working capital in a business as like fuel in a car. If you rock up to a Ferrari dealership and buy a brand new Ferrari and it's the most amazing car you've ever seen, but there's no fuel in the tank, then when you start the car, it's not gonna move. Businesses are the same. The fuel in a business is called working capital. So it's cash, it's accounts receivables, could be inventory, less payables, taxes due, bank loans, all those different things. So we wanna understand how much capital the business actually needs to be able to trade at the levels that we're seeing in the PL. So we definitely want the balance sheets for the last three years. And what you also want with a balance sheet is you want a balance sheet that's current. And what I mean by that is it's a balance sheet that's been produced within the last 45 days. So why is that really important? Well, because sometimes there's a delay between the end of a financial year. So let's say we're in 2023 now, and you're looking at a business, uh, you might have not got the 2022 all accounts yet. You might all be looking at 2021. So if you've got a balance sheet from 2021, which is like 18 months ago, you can't really understand financially what's going on in the business. So virtually every business that's worth buying will have internal accounting software. You can go in um, and you can literally, I could log in to the accounting platforms of any of my 27 businesses right now, and I could print you out a balance sheet as of today, right? Not yesterday, not last week, today. Balance sheets are calculated in real time. I could print a balance sheet off one of my businesses now, and then in 30 minutes, it'll be different because a customer might have paid me or I might have sent out another invoice uh, or some inventory might have come in to one of my businesses. So a balance sheet is kind of a snapshot in time and it changes. But you want a balance sheet that's within the last kind of 45 days so you can see now what are the working capital requirements of the business because some businesses are seasonal, right? So if you have a landscaping business uh, in Canada, then in the winter months, you're not going to be doing any landscaping. So the working capital requirements in that business are going to be really low. Whereas if you're in the height of the summer, when everyone's doing that work, then definitely the working capital requirements are going to be high. So you can understand the seasonality of a business as well by looking at the balance sheet. So those are the absolute kind of minimums that you need. So you can't do anything in terms of making an offer on a business unless you've got that information. We need three years because we can look at the trends. If the revenues are going up, we want to understand why. If the revenues are going down, we also want to understand why. We might even decide that we don't want to buy the business if it's uh, if it's really, really struggling. So we need three years to look at the trends in the business. Now, there are some things as well that are kind of nice to have. If you don't get these until due diligence stage, which we'll get into, I think on day eight, um, it doesn't matter. But it'd be good to see a list of the shareholders so we know who the shareholders are and who owns what percentage of the business. That would be really, really good. Get a copy of the shareholders agreement or the operating agreement as well. That would be really, really good. If you're doing an LBO, if you're going to be borrowing money against any assets in the business, we also want to see an asset list. So if you're looking at an engineering company and it's got trucks and machines and all this kind of cool stuff, you want to get a kind of list of that. So that will show you how it's been depreciated and depreciation, as you know, ties into all of these different numbers as well. Um, what also could we see? So another great thing to look at would be monthly P&Ls and balance sheets. So again, going back to that seasonality, if you've got a business, you have an ice cream company, going to be doing really, really well in the summertime, probably not as well in the wintertime. So you can see how the sales kind of ramp up and ramp down. And if you get the monthlies, over a three year period, you can track year on year how the performance of the business has gone. That is more kind of due diligence type stuff. Um, but if you can get it as part of the uh, of the initial deal vetting, you know, all well and good. So we're gonna be diving into all of these different types of financial documents and records uh, tomorrow on valuation and structure. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. So just to recap, sign an NDA. It's a good way of building rapport protects the seller from you disclosing any of the information into the public market. 
which you're a noble capitalist, you're not going to do, but it makes the seller feel better. And then that's the list of information that you need to get from the seller. And remember, really important, the financials that you get have to be internally generated numbers from an accounting platform. If they give you an Excel spreadsheet or they give you a hand journal, you know, don't take any notes of that. You want them coming out of an accounting platform because they're going to be a lot more true and accurate. So I hope you found that useful. I will see you tomorrow on the next day. Until then, bye for now. Hey guys, I'm Carl Allen. I'm the founder of Dealmaker Wealth Society. I've done tens of billions of dollars of deals over the last 30 plus years. If you're new to my channel, definitely hit like and subscribe so that you can get all of my amazing Dealmaker content in real time. You're not gonna miss any of the outstanding information that I'm gonna share with you. And if there's a question that you've got, if there's something that you want to know the answer for and you want me to speak to it, definitely hit me up in the comment section and I will record those videos for you and I will get them on this channel as soon as possible. So love having you part of this YouTube community and I can't wait to serve you. Until then, bye-bye for now.